Hey, welcome back to weld.com. I'm Bob with Frank and Fab, and today we're gonna do some stick welding tips for beginners. So we're gonna start with, uh, got a little 3 8 plate here, simply prepped. I got some of the mill scale cleaned off of it. We got a little V groove cut into it. Um, and we're gonna run some rods, and basically we're gonna do kind of how uh, I started out in school. We're gonna work on running pass after pass after pass. We're gonna get into some practice stuff. Not everything is gonna be on a plate like this. Not everything's gonna be in a shop setting. Uh, a lot of the work that we do is out in the field. And I think a lot of what people are watching right now, they're in the field, they're on the farm, they're doing small jobs, they're doing pickup work. You're doing things that you need to, uh, to know a little bit of aspects on, on how these rods work. So we're gonna work on just getting a nice practice bead going and then we're going to work on bonding some things and and really this is just going to be a course on on how to keep everything consistent i like to touch base on the farm industry because there's a lot of people out there that are getting into welding so they can fix their own equipment because it costs a lot to hire people but then at the same time people want to start their own small business this world's a little bit crazy right now and you need to depend on yourself so we're gonna do a couple things to kind of help you get out there and get an idea of, of what it's like to be a stick welder in this industry. All right, so we're gonna talk about some of my hoods we have over here. They're all uh, two by four uh, shaded lenses here. This one's a fixed shade. Um, this one's just a single shade 11 and this one's a variable shade. But what I wanna talk about with these hoods and what I think is very important, especially when you're just starting out is to have a nice clear view of what you're doing. So I think all that slag buildup in there, it gets in your way and it, and it compromises your view. So I think it's really important to make sure that you have a nice clear view. So change those lenses out. They're really cheap. You can get them at any welding shop for pretty cheap. Um, as for other hoods, uh, there's all kinds. Bowler makes a really awesome hood here. Uh, but these are, you'd see a lot of people get them. I mean, they're, they're all, all kinds of lenses, different size views. If you want to get a big full view and auto lens, you know, whatever's going to make your day easier. Um, we are going to run some 7018s today. These are a Bowler Fox EV fifties, and we're just going to run a lot of single passes over here. We're going to stack them on top of each other and then clean them and stack them and clean them and stack them and clean them. A lot of times when you have to re arc strike, your 7018, it does create a lot of slag. That same slag buildup that you'll see laid out on the plate is gonna, you know, pile up here on your, on the end of your rod, and then you'll have to fight it every time you want to restrike it. So a lot of times, what I'll do is I keep a little side plate that, with something underneath it. I got a pair of old gloves right here, so I can just kind of tap it, and then it'll clean out my material, and then it gives me a nice clean arc strike again. I think it's uh, important. To, to keep these little things in, in mind. And like I said before, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable because you're not always gonna be able to lay on your arm or on your side and get a weld. So it's good to practice on different angles. Just make sure your rod angle is good and make sure your arc length is consistent and then you should, you should see some of that same turnout every time. And then as your consistency picks up, then you can move on to different welds, different types of welds, different angle welds, butt joints, V grooves, and so on and so forth. But I wanted to talk about just having a nice grinding disc to make sure if you do get some imperfections, you see a lot of porosity, grind it out, try it again, or leave it there and work next to it and just keep an eye on what you did that maybe caused that and it'll help you in the future. Definitely have a nice wire wheel. I think is good to help clean all the slag out when you're practicing. A chip and hammer and a wire brush is key, but sometimes you can't get it as clean as you'd like for it to get. And when you're practicing, you wanna be able to get the nicest weld possible every time so that you can work on your consistency. So those are a couple things I just wanted to talk about before we put our hood on and we get to burning some rod. All right, so we got our table cleaned off and we're getting ready to run some passes on our prep plate. This is an old coupon here. I just put a little, grinded a little V groove in here. I got all the mill scale off. We're gonna run some simple passes. We're gonna run one. We're gonna leave us a little gap and then we're gonna run another and run a little gap and run another. And then we're gonna have everything cleaned off and then we're gonna cap all those. We're gonna watch our consistency. We're gonna make sure that the first bead looks like the second bead looks like the third bead. And if they're continuing to get worse, 
then we need to adjust, or if they continue to look better, then we know we're on the right track too. So on the welder side, we're using uh, Everlast Multi-Process Lightning MTS 275, and we're gonna be running at 120 amps. We got our hot start time at 0.3 seconds and at 20% hot start, and our arc force is gonna be at 20% as well. I started with a small buzz box and I didn't have any of those awesome features. So you don't need them to, to produce awesome welds, but they are beneficial. I got this V groove cut in here just so I can follow it. It helps keep your mind straight and focused, keeps your eyes and your beads straight too. So um, we're gonna start with that. I'm gonna run a, quite a few passes. We're gonna clean it up, take a look at it and move on. Uh, we might get this plate flipped over and check out some 6010, maybe some 6011 rods today as well because they're pretty good farm industry wise or in the field in general. Um, so we want to kind of give you an aspect of, of different rods in different situations. All right, so I just ran a handful of passes overlapping each one about 50% over each pass. And I did do a couple different times. I did some arc stops and restrikes just so I could show you a little uh, trick here with tapping your rod, making sure your rod's clean so you have a nice arc start. Um, also, the material is heating up. It's heating up pretty fast because it is a thin plate. So what you wanna do is you either gotta adjust your temperature, which is, Pretty common, you need to kind of turn down a little bit. Um, but also you can quench this plate since you're just doing some practice. If it's hot, you drop it in some water and it quenches it. It'll definitely uh, save you some time and you can get back out and get started on running some passes again. I did mention doing some arc start and stops. Also, I tried to reuse the last little bit of my rod because not everybody can afford to just spin up partial rod and throw them out. So I always try to come back and use the rest of my rod in different situations, but it also helps for your arc start and your arc stops for getting consistent after you after you finish that pass. So I stopped right in here halfway. It was nice to be able to restart up here, bring it back in and then drag it back out of my puddle. These 7018 rods, all 7018 rods are low hydrogen. So they create like a, a heavy dense flux and you're not really you know, it's not needed to, to, to do any kind of rod manipulation or anything. You want to just kind of keep a nice steady drag and just stay consistent with your puddle. And then you end up having a nice pretty bead like that. And then we're going to run some 6010 and 6011 and we'll see the difference between the two rods. Let's check that out. So instead of adjusting our amperage, we let the plate cool. We shut down the machine. Um, after everything was cooled off, we fired the machine back up. We're just gonna set our amperage. I'm still at 120 amps. We might do some adjustment to that, but I'm not gonna do any arc force or hot, hot start time just to kind of give you an idea of what a standard machine that might not have these features will be running like. And then we're gonna run some passes and we're gonna adjust our temperature accordingly, but we're gonna run some straight beads. We're gonna do a little bit of, try and do a little manipulation work and then we'll, we'll see how these passes go.
All right, real quick. So we had our amperage set at 120 for our 6011 and it was way too hot. So as soon as we arced up, we were way too hot. So we adjusted our amperage down. I brought it down to about 79 or so um, and it was running pretty decent. But there was uh, quite a few times where I, I snuffed out in my rod. And what I did was because we are, this is focused on practicing and trying to keep up uh, a steady stream, I kept running. But in real world, these type of little uh, impurities right here are gonna cause you to fail a test or could also compromise your welds in the future. However, this main focus is practice. So I just ke I stayed steady with the rod after I snuffed out, I just kept going to clear out. Um, and I ran a couple passes to make sure that the plate was getting warm enough and that my amperage is setting. So I did bring up my amperage to about 82, about 82 to 85 window. And we're gonna run some, some more passes over these just to keep our practice going. All right, so I uh, fixed my little snuff out problem. I just adjusted my amperage. I was working on my arc control and everything and uh, seemed to get pretty decent beads laid out in here. A couple things I do want to touch base on. I, when I switched rods, I was actually, before I was using a fixed lens and you could kind of see me drop my hood and you can also see my arc start a little jumpy. Um, so when I switched over to the 6010 and the 6011, I used an auto lens, kind of helped me keep control of where I was going. Also, these rods, these are actually mixed between the 6010 and the 6011. They're pretty much the same rod. They do very much the same, same work, but these 6011s are pretty beneficial for the farm industry, burning through paint. Uh, the 60 series is really like a, it's a deep, aggressive rod. It kind of gouges into your plate a little bit more. So kind of want to watch that as you're rolling. And then the flux also does not flake off. It doesn't chip like you would see the beautiful 7018 rods. So don't get discouraged by the way that it looks. These rods are different for a reason and they do serve a different purpose. Just a couple things though. Make sure you got your work area cleaned up. It is really, I feel imperative to have uh, a wire wheel so you can get some of that slag out of your 6011 because it, it does hold it and it bonds it pretty well. And if you don't clean it out and then you go to capping it, you're going to seal that right inside of your next pass. And then you're going to compromise all of those welds. Practice wise, just keep practicing. Mm -hmm. 